Illiterate Manga Club. Hey yo, welcome to Illiterate Manga Club. I'm your host, Strawberry Nick. And today I wanted to talk about a brand new manga that just debuted in Shonen Jump a couple of weeks ago. As of the time of recording this, there's only two chapters available. And it is Wild Strawberry. There's not really a whole lot to go off of because there's only two chapters available, so... This is more so kind of like a first impressions kind of video rather than a proper review. But this manga seems very promising. And I'm definitely very interested in seeing kind of where it goes from here and keeping up with it whenever there's a new chapter. Wild Strawberry takes place in a plant-infested Tokyo. Although nobody is sure where the plants came from, the one thing that is certain is that it's permanently changed the way of life for the residents of Tokyo. If that wasn't bad enough, the plants have adapted to essentially take over humans and become what are known as Jinka, human flowers. These Jinka are dealt with viciously by what's known as the Flower Funeral Force. What a cool name. So that's a very basic outline of the plot. And I'll talk about the story stuff a little bit more in a second, but at least for me, the standout thing about the manga so far is its incredibly beautiful and detailed art. The manga is simultaneously beautiful and also kind of terrifying. Like, the manga is just loaded to the brim with all these beautiful drawings of Tokyo infested with plants. Like, I look at some of these pages and I just have to stop and wonder, how long did it take to draw this? And beyond just the art of the plants kind of taking over Tokyo, the manga is also very gruesome, featuring plants bursting out of people, humans getting eaten by the Jinka, as well as the horrifying depictions of these Jinka, which more so resemble like demons that you would see in Berserk as opposed to some sort of plant monster. They're very yucky looking and I'm excited to see more of these sort of creature designs. I think there's a lot you can do with the concept of plants as enemies. And the author seems to have a knack for drawing them in kind of disturbing ways. The author is Ire Yonemoto, and the guy is a little bit of a mystery. He has no other works credited to his name, but I, I kind of refuse to believe that this is the guy's first manga. You know, it just looks too good, right? So unless this guy is just like the manga prodigy of our generation, I'm gonna assume this is an already established author working under a different pen name. Because like, bro, for your first published manga, this thing is crazy. So yeah, if anybody knows more about who the author is, Feel free to let me know, i definitely like to look into some of this guy's previous work if he actually has any. Otherwise, yeah, for now he's just the guy who's making Wild Strawberry. So yeah, the manga seems very promising, like I said it has some absolutely stunning artwork. It has a pretty interesting setting and kind of concept to base a story around. It has a pretty nice kind of decrepit, hopeless atmosphere. However, one thing I'm not entirely sure about, and this is kind of a good thing and a bad thing, is that I'm not entirely sure where the story is gonna go from here. I think my biggest worry when it comes to Wild Strawberry is that this is going to end up being one of those mangas that has a really solid concept, but the author's just not really sure where to take it beyond that point. I feel like this happens a lot, especially with manga that kind of get their run cut prematurely, is that the author ends up creating something that would probably work really well as like a one-shot or a series that's only meant to last within a certain amount of chapters. And then they kind of come to realize that the, the concept really didn't have that much staying power beyond that point. I plan on making a video about this topic at some point, kind of chatting about this idea of staying power in manga and why some series seem to last essentially forever and why some can only manage to squeeze out like 25 chapters and then they're done. So yeah, that's something I'm not entirely sure about. I'm not sure if the author plans for it to run a particular length of time and then it's kind of just over. Or if it's gonna end up being one of those things where it's like, it'll be done when it's done. But yeah, beyond that, I'm not really sure where it's gonna go from here. Like, if it's going to sort of turn into almost like a, a battle manga sort of thing, or if it's gonna stick to a more sort of grim horror kind of manga. But I don't know, at the same time, that's pretty exciting. It's kind of fun not knowing where something is gonna go. So we'll just have to stick with it and kind of see where Wild Strawberry takes us. So yeah, consider checking it out. What we have available so far is genuinely beautiful. Like, especially Especially when it comes to all the artwork of the plants, these are probably some of the most beautiful depictions of like flora that I've ever seen in a manga. Like this piece that I'm using in the thumbnail right here is like actually some museum level shit. Like you would expect to see this in the Louvre. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next Illiterate Manga Club.